Muchas gracias. Thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you to the Inter-American Institute for Democracy. I'm representing the International Foundation for Freedom. Uh, uh, our president, Mario Vargas Llosa, sent his uh, greetings, his warm uh, greetings. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here as a member of this panel that is so brilliant and to uh, meet some important friends such as uh, Montaner, Pastrana, and President Macri, Secretary Almagro, and I'm very pleased to find Ex, uh, former President Hurtado, maybe he doesn't remember, but he was a player, an actor in a very important episode that we lived in 2008 in Rosario in a seminar celebrating 20 years of the Foundation uh, Freedom that I founded in that city. And the boss, uh, a number of people were uh, was traveling, Sebastián Piñera and Vargas Llosa, etc., was attacked with a number of people who, uh, holding uh, signs, uh, supporting Chavez, etc., and they almost set the uh, omnibus in fire. Mexico and Argentina. Mexico and Argentina, they say here on the agenda, maybe because they are uh, two large countries for representative and very emblematic in Latin America. But the question that we have to ask ourselves uh, when we celebrated 50 years of the Mount Pillaring organization, we had a meeting. Milton Friedman was there. He had been a founder together with Syed and other liberalism defenders. And someone asked Friedman, how are we doing vis-a-vis -vis 1947? Worse, better, or the same? Well, depending on the moment you are comparing to. And that answer could be applied to the situation in Latin America today. Better, worse, equal? I don't know. If you think, sadly, we have the same dictatorship. Nicaragua, Cuba, Bolivia. But 50 years ago, all the countries almost seemed to be under the domain of the Bol Bolivarianism. Uh, Frente Amplio in Uruguay, Lula in Brazil, in Chile, Bachelet, the Kirchner in Argentina, Ecuador, where we had great news with the victory of Guillermo Lasso. Correa was there as a president. If you compare that with that time, 15 years ago, maybe we're not that bad, obviously. We have those dictatorships we are aware of, concerning cases of Chile, Colombia, and Peru. And whereas in Mexico, I remember that in the affair of Guadalajara two years ago, several members of the uh, Supreme Court asked Vargas Llosa a meeting to anticipate what's going on, this attempt of López Obrador to manipulate justice. So there is a very serious question mark and a deep concern. And then Argentina, always a country that uh, provides surprises, and, and not always good ones. A government that tries to be authoritarian, no doubt of that. We have seen that along the time, managing the pandemic very badly. You don't know if they do that because they are stubborn or because uh, if they are bad at managing the pandemic. They have had uh, one of the longest quarantines in the world, a very important a fall of the GDP of 10% of the economy. One of the countries, what among the 10 countries with uh, schools locked for a long, uh, longest time, and now the court approved the uh, federal capital, capital to um, open or reopen the school, and that with uh, many dead people. Argentina is amongst the uh, worst countries in the world. When President Fernandez said that I'm like a father, I'm going to continue taking care of you. 
I'm willing to tell you, stop taking care of us. We can take care of ourselves because we will be able to uh, do that better. It's been a disaster. A government that sees uh, justice, and they have uh, said that and repeated that, not as an independent branch, but as a service, as a public service, as a political service. However, and just to wrap up, I read Voltaire a lot. He has a book, uh, one of the episodes Candid uh, discusses with someone said, uh, optimism is a stupid way of seeing bad things af as being good. No, uh, I am an Argentinian, uh, we need an extra dosis of optimism. I try to be optimistic. Argentina will never be authoritarian. Argentina will not go there because thanks to this guy who is sitting there, Macri, opposition has 41% of the votes. Opposition has been resisting. The campaign was great. It was a 48 to 41 in the latest election, and that 41 percent is resisting. Is resisting that 41 percent, and I believe that's more than that. And I have faith that in October, November, when we have the ele elections, we win the elections again. And in 2023, once again, the opposition uh, wins, and we can start having rotation, power rotation. M Mauricio Macri was the first non pernist uh, uh, president who ended up his mandate after 90 years. It's a very Argentinian sophistication, but I really hope that that 41% will be key to win the elections, the legislative uh, uh, elections, and to win the opposition again. I have uh, many differences with Juntos para el Cambio movement, but we need to uh, resist Ch Chavism and to uh, get back that Republican spirit. And to be uh, clearly optimistic, I want to say something. Yesterday, there was something extraordinary in Madrid. Madrid is the other capital of freedom and democracy for Ibe Ibero America. Mm, I just not only uh, won the elections, but got more votes than all the left wing together. So. It deserves, uh, she deserves a monument. Uh, pa Pablo Iglesias is, uh, has resigned, is retired. Pablo Iglesias went home, and that's incredible. Not only the monument, but she also uh, deserves uh, many flowers in that monument.